you the armor soldier well suited to fight on the nuclear battlefield must learn the simple lessons of protection against the effects of nuclear bursts nuclear weapons have great capabilities and decided limitations understanding these you can rapidly exploit friendly nuclear fire support and remain fit and effective after nuclear attack by the enemy years of scientific testing have revealed to our army the secrets of the after effects of nuclear explosions there are three principal hazards heat radiation nuclear radiation and the blast wave at the instant of detonation there is a searing white flash many times as brilliant as the sun a ball of fire is formed instantly the three tremendous energies are released flash heat radiation traveling at the speed of light piercing nuclear radiation also traveling at the speed of light and the blast or shock wave coming more slowly at about the speed of sound these test shots show the instant combustion caused by the intense heat and the destructive power of the blast wave. First the heat, then the blast wave. Tents collapse. In the blast wave, houses burst into kindling wood. Anything may become a missile. masonry and steel structures are broken and twisted. If exposed in the open, you may be picked up and hurled through the air. Yet this tank, exposed to the blast wave, passed through the test undamaged, protected by its thick armor plate. However, these effects are quickly over. Heat radiation is a hazard for one second. The prompt nuclear radiation hazard to troops on the ground is over in about one minute. The blast shock passes in a matter of seconds, and the heat and blast effects you can see and feel. You cannot sense the presence of nuclear radiation effects, so you use instruments to detect and measure them. Four types are emitted by the fireball. Alpha particles and beta particles have a range of only a few yards and low penetrating power, while gamma rays and neutrons have considerable range and high penetrating power. Alpha and beta particles, because of their low penetrating power, are stopped by most surfaces. Even a soldier's skin. They are a hazard only when materials emitting these particles get into the body through breaks in the skin or through the nose or mouth. The powerful gamma rays, however, penetrate the body like X-rays. Neutrons also have great penetrating power. A heavy dose of gamma rays and neutrons is so destructive that you must make maximum effort to shield against them. In addition to the prompt nuclear radiation which we have discussed, there is another type. Residual nuclear radiation. This comes from material contaminated by the nuclear explosion. The neutrons from the fireball Bombarding the soil induce radioactivity, causing contamination of the ground. Now let us compare the hazards from the three types of bursts. The air burst. the surface burst, and the subsurface burst. 
you must be able to recognize each type so that you can report it and know the hazards to expect. In the air burst, a comparatively small amount of earth is sucked up into the radioactive fireball. You recognize the air burst by the familiar single mushroom shape of the cloud. The contaminated material in the cloud is carried high into the air and loses its radioactivity before it falls back to the surface of the earth. In a surface burst, the fireball touches the earth, digging a crater. You recognize the surface burst by the double head of the mushroom cloud. Considerable contamination around the crater and in the fallout may be scattered over vast areas. The subsurface burst leaves a larger crater and long-lasting radiation. No fireball may be visible, only a plume of dirt. There is little or no danger from flash heat or prompt nuclear radiation. How can you protect yourself against nuclear radiation, against heat radiation, and the blast? In several ways, principally by shielding. Never before has good cover been so important on the battlefield. With conventional weapons, a miss may be as good as a mile. But with nuclear weapons, a miss of a mile may be as dangerous as a direct hit to soldiers without effective cover. With all openings closed or covered, the tank gives either partial or complete shielding against the effects of a nuclear explosion. It shuts out most of the initial blinding flash of light. The heat radiation hits the exterior for one second and is over. Duration of the high temperatures is too short to heat up the inside of the tank. Personnel, ammunition, and gas tanks are unaffected. The armor plate very greatly reduces the amount of gamma rays and neutrons the crew receives. The armor plate does stop the alpha and beta particles completely. The ruggedness of the tank resists the crushing and dragging effect of the blast that damages or destroys other vehicles or structures. Moreover, a tank can move through a contaminated area, which would be dangerous to foot soldiers, yet comparatively safe to a tank crew buttoned up. Armor plate provides excellent shielding, and so does a foxhole. If it is prepared with an understanding of nuclear risks, it should be deep and there should be overhead cover. The earth barrier and overhead cover protect the soldier in the foxhole from heat radiation and absorb many of the dangerous gamma rays and neutrons. The blast wave passes over his head. 